Hello friends, welcome to my channel Sushant Chess Files. Today we are at the next topic that is the theoretical rook and games and we are going to continue with our topic of rook and two pawns versus rook. The concept of self-propelling pawns which we discussed in the last session. Today we have got a case where the black king is well placed. It means the defender's king is placed in front of the pawns and this makes the drawing task possible. Also, the black rook is very well placed on a6, it avoids the rook's check from the b6 square. Just a simple technique by black and we will see that drawing will be not so difficult. It's white to play, so white starts with the move rook d4. Just playing a waiting game, the rook needs to give check. The rook can come from d8 to g8 and force the movement of the black king and then the white king can try to penetrate. That is the only trap that white has got in the position. So black just waits with rook b6 and white goes to d8. Here black has simple rook b4 check, first trying to push the king back when drawing the game will be very easy because if the king goes back we can just take g5 in many cases. Do note that after king f3, kg5, h7 would be a losing position but black can simply attack the g pawn with his rook and he can try to take the g pawn with the rook. Also, here he can start giving checks from the b3 square, which is another important technique, and the game will be drawn. So, white plays a e5, and here black can do two simple things. One, he can try to give checks, but in doing so, we should just remember that the white king should not penetrate. So, the easier technique is to block the seventh rank with the rook. So, here we have three candidates as per the famous quote, the rook is well placed behind the pawns, right? But here rook g4 loses because of some tactical reason. So let's look at rook g4 first. After rook g4, rook g8 check, king h7, it looks like the game can become draw. Especially after rg7 blunder, rg7, king h8 and after king f5, the rook is given up. Such a rook sacrifice is called desperado. Sometimes also called the mad rook. The rook is just sacrificed everywhere. King g6, rook f6 check, the rook cannot be taken because of stalemate. And after king h5 also, rook h6 check, whatever takes the rook, it's a stalemate again. But here white wins with the move king f5. When we see that after kg8, kg4, king and pawn idiom is lost, rook g5 doesn't work now. And after rook g1, we see that the g pawn is protected. So the g8 rook can just move away. It can move to e8 or b8 any square. Next move will be checked and king will be pushed down and white will win the game very easily. Another possibility is the move rook b5 check. Rook d5, we see that black cannot play rook b6 because of rook d6 check. Rook should be traded and again black will lose. So rook b7, very important technique blocking the seventh rank. And here also game is drawn. Because after d6 check, we can just take g5. After ke6, there is rook check, rook d6, and again rook b7, blocking the king's path. And now again the threat is king g5. So rook d7, rook b6 check, ke7, king takes g5, h7, rook b8. Because after rook d8, there is rd7 check forcing rook d7, otherwise the h7 pawn is lost and after rook d7 again black goes rook b8 threatening kg6 and taking the pawn. After king f7 also there is the move king h6 when the pawn on h7 is lost. But we must note that the far easier and much safer defense is the move rook b7. Simply now ke6 can be met by kg5 because rook controls h7. It means rook g8 check forced, king h7, white has nothing better than rook e8 here, when after kg6 the point is king has to go back to f4 and after rook b4 check the rook can block these checks. If the white rook would have moved to any other square then rook checks would have been possible. So now again comes rook b6 and we reach the starting position, let's say after the move rook d4, rook a6, it will be mere repetition of moves. I hope you are finding these lessons useful and instructive. Thanks for your time.